set the stage, uh, particularly with the theme of devotion this morning. And uh, I got it. Thank you. Um, with the theme of devotion, that is at the heart of not only this sculpture that he showed you, and I'll tell you a little bit about the backstory behind that, but uh, and how this piece has evolved into this life size, larger than life size. Uh, figure of Paramahansa Yogananda blessing the world. And um, uh, I guess I'll, I'll move back a little bit. Some of you heard some of this last night at our gathering. It was beautiful. But this piece here um, began at a time when I really <clears throat> didn't know how to do any sculpture, very little sculpture. My drawing teacher in college was having little meetings at his home uh, that taught in, in Amarillo, Texas, uh, that was introducing people to meditation, some metaphysical studies, he and his wife. He was passing out books. He gave me the autobiography of a yogi. So, like I said last night, that was pure gold in Amarillo, Texas in the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> so I immersed myself in that. And, and at the same time, by being exposed to uh, his work, I was absorbing through osmosis the techniques of sculpture, and I didn't even, didn't even realize it. I thought I was interested in drawing and painting and music. So, uh, longer story short, several years later, I was at a point where I wanted to express my um, appreciation and devotion for Yogananda, and I started having this vision of creating a bust of Yogananda, a portrait, and uh, they weren't there weren't any around back then. You, you might remember there were. There were no sculptures, uh, maybe a few things sitting around in, in California. But uh, so I started creating this mask of Yogananda slowly, and I didn't know much about sculpture. I would, I would learn something, and then I would apply it to the, to the piece and set it aside for several months. And I'd have another realization, a creative realization about how a technique could be done, and I would apply it to the piece. So that process went on. I wanted it to be as uh, perfect to his image, his physical likeness, as I possibly could make it. So over the course of 10 years, I think I finally arrived at that goal. I had one cast in bronze. I sent it to Swami Kriyananda. I had visited Ananda and met some of the students. Don't stop that thought. I'm just going to give some of the advantage of watching your, oh, okay. watching your mouth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so... I was too I was too shy to actually talk to Kriyananda, but I met some of the people there, and they had come through Austin, Texas, and had helped. Uh, we had uh, at our apartment. We let them stay there, and and they had helped me with this piece. Kriyananda said, "Well, you know," and the guy and the people in his group said, "Well, you know, his smile's not big enough." So. <laughs> So I worked on the smile, and Kriyananda said, "Well, there's a little bit of foolishness right here in the shape of his, shape of his mouth, you know." And I said, "Well, I didn't realize that." So I, I learned about that, and he helped, he helped with the features, and uh, he infused his personal knowledge of Yogananda into this into this bust right here. So now this is going to come to the eight foot piece here. Now here, a number of years later, they asked me to do this life size piece. And, um, um, I, of course, I had sculpted Babaji um, figure and the small ones and larger ones. And they have gone out all over the world. People have ordered them, and so I have this. So, But uh, what I'm trying to say is there's a progression, and I didn't really realize it at the time. But now looking back, now that we're working on an eight-foot eight piece of bronze, I realize there's a progression between... My drawing teacher, being a sculptor, and, and my, my path being lit, led to his, he gave me autobiography of a yogi. Uh, it came through that channel, and I think, uh, I think, like all of us here, we are molded into being channels for some sort of a divine offering, and I think this was my path. I was disciplined by the 10 years of discipline um, working on this bust of Yogananda, that created the discipline and the techniques. Later evolved into this 10-foot or 8-foot bronze of Yogananda we're working on right now. 
So that's my perspective on that. And there's a lot of devotion. And while you're working on a piece like that, it's an opportunity for <clears throat> attunement to Yogananda's spirit, his personality, in a way that is hard to describe. Babaji, same thing. So um, it's an opportunity to open up intuitively, creatively, devotionally. Um, sometimes I would have to set the tools down and just immerse myself in the moment, you know. So uh, if you have a way to immerse yourself devotionally in something like that, it's a, it's a meditative experience. So anyway, uh, we went to the foundry. Now we're going to descend from that level to the practical level here, but we went to the foundry a couple of days ago and we were very heartened by the fact that um, uh, the foundry that's in the area uh, can do virtually everything that we need. He or his resources that he can uh, outsource from the foundry. And that's that made life simpler. We can have it done all right up here in this part of the country. We don't have to transport it from New Mexico uh, or have work done in other, other states. He's got the capability to do it all right up here. We saw a, a piece in progress of a life-size piece using the same techniques that we're talking about. And those techniques use modern technology of scanning the image, uh, this maquette, which I'll show you, the model will be scanned into a computer and <clears throat> that information will be um, used to cut foam into the proportions that we want. In other words, from a 14-inch model to an 8-foot tall uh, image in foam which will we, we will go over with clay and, and, and re-add the details, re-add the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the refinements, the details that we're going to need. It'll look like the model, basically. So that's where we're at with it. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some resources and, once again, some devotion. And uh, we invite everyone here. And I would like to see... Uh, I would like to see... Ananda Village get on board and maybe open this to uh, something that the entire Ananda movement can contribute to. Uh, if we have if we have large numbers of people, everyone donates ten dollars. It's a done deal, you know. <laughs> so it's not a burden on anyone. <clears throat> so uh, that's all I have. But afterwards, we're going to unveil it in here. So if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, then tonight we're going to have some music. Is that right? That's right. And we'll have some fun, okay? Gary, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing.